This is the I Will Teach You a Language podcast, episode 184. Welcome to the I Will Teach You a Language podcast. Weekly motivation and language learning tips to help you become fluent in any language. Now, here's your host, Ollie Richards. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the I Will Teach You a Language podcast. We've got an interesting weekend coming up here in London. Um, I'm going to the British Podcast Awards. Not because I was invited, <laughs> because... Uh, I guess uh, this podcast just isn't special enough, I suppose. <laughs> I'm actually going to support a, a friend of mine, Mark, who is the brains behind Coffee Break. Spanish, Italian, Chinese, German, the Radio Lingua series. Uh, you've probably listened to them before. Fantastic podcasts. and been around for a very long time. And he's been nominated. I think he's, Coffee Break Italian was nominated for one of these awards. And so I'm going to go along and support him. And um, he listens to this podcast, actually. So, hi, Mark, if you're listening. Uh <laughs> Thanks for listening, and I'll see you on Saturday. Today we've got a question about grammar and bad students. But before we get to that, I'd like to thank the sponsors of the show, the place where I get my language lessons every week with a combination of professional language teachers and more informal tutors who just like to help you practice speaking. The company is called italki, and if you'd like to get a free lesson, you can go to iwillteachyoualanguage.com forward slash free lesson. One quick note now before we get into the podcast. I'm afraid there's no transcript today and it's my fault because I was too late recording this so we didn't have time. It was either a choice between delaying the podcast by a week and waiting for the transcript or doing no transcript. So I chose the uh, <laughs> the latter for the sake of getting it out on time. So apologies for that. Nevertheless, I hope you enjoy it. Here is Ferdinand. Hi Oli, this is uh, Ferdinand. I'm from Germany. I work as a German teacher, and lately I've had to deal more and more with uh, what I call high maintenance students. You know, people who started like who started learning German themselves, and but they really started it like with the communicative language approach, which I don't mind at all. But it's just um, the thing is that they seem to have so many holes in their grammar. Their grammar is not sound and they have like high expectations at themselves, so to speak. So that kind of combination of high expectations and holes in their, in their grammar and just having learned German, you know, sp through speaking. Um, it kind of like, sometimes it leaves me dumbf dumbfounded as a teacher. And like, because sometimes I got a feeling that I have to start, um, teaching them from, from scratch again. Even though they already believe that they have like an, a B1 level, sometimes their vocabulary might be good, but it's kind of, it's hard for me. I don't want to like destroy their confidence and tell them like that we have to practically, that we have to start from scratch again. Um, because they cannot, they, well, they can hardly kind of, um, build a proper sentence in, in German. For example, the case is, you know, um, you studied German yourself. So it's kind of like, it's, it's hard, like, I don't want to tell them that practically like two years of learning German by themselves have been like, uh, like have not been useful at all. So what is your opinion? Uh, Ollie, I'd love to hear it. Uh, keep up the good, uh, the good work. Keep up the great work. Okay. Bye. Hi Ferdinand. Thank you very much for a great question. And I love getting questions from teachers. Actually, I guess it's because what I do is just as much teaching as learning even more teaching than learning, really. So if you're a teacher and you'd like to ask me a question for the podcast, please do. I'd love to, to receive it. You can go to iwillteachyourlanguage.com forward slash ask to do that. So Ferdinand has an interesting problem. He's got students who have gone off for a couple of years and learned German by themselves. I mean, in many ways, that's a good problem to have because you've obviously got very self-motivated motivated students. But um, really, I guess this what this comes down to is your role as the teacher. You know, what is your role as the teacher? Is it to teach the students what you know they need? Or is your role to give the students what they want and, and, and what they pay for? It's uh, one of the uh, the big kind of dilemmas for for teachers. And uh, this, this answer really gets to the bottom of that. But I mean, I agree with you that, you know, as a teacher, if your students got loads of holes in their grammar, you need to address that. And you wouldn't be doing your job if you weren't trying to uh, address that. Now, what I understood from you is that your students, I mean, they may be aware of that because you've probably told them, but they're reluctant to go back to, to basics and start, you know, 
learning about the cases all all from the beginning and and I don't blame them because I mean motivationally speaking that might be not really their cup of tea so I I do understand um but I think as a teacher really you know our job is to help students understand why they need it and get the whatever change you want to affect try to make it try to make the student feel like they instigate it because the more that we impose things as the teacher the less effective it is change has to come from 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 within now if i were in your position i would probably start off the same way i would try to suggest that they go back and do basic grammar exercises too but let's assume for the sake of the podcast that that they're resisting that the what you've got to achieve, I think, is to get your students to a point where they are conscious of the mistakes that they're making and raise their awareness to a point where they are no longer comfortable making those mistakes. If they've been speaking German for two years, very happily, they can probably communicate. Uh, they are most likely not aware of the mistakes that they're making. And so the first step has to be raising awareness of those mistakes. And so I would, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about when uh, when I teach, the kind of things that I do to help raise awareness of mistakes. Because if you can do that, then they will start to ask you for help in fixing those mistakes. So I think the first step is with your students is to talk to them about their goals and why they're learning German. And then from that, start a discussion about how better grammar might help. It's if they can articulate why they're learning German, for example, I don't know, maybe they want to go and study in Germany, then it's fairly obvious how improving their German grammar would help them get on at, at university or, or in their job or something like that. So it's important to start off with that conversation just so that you're on the same page and you have the same the same vision. Beyond that, the one, one of the, the most effective ways of, of teaching, and this is something that I, I used to do in the classroom a, a lot because... There are lots of students that don't like grammar. And it's something that I would call stealth grammar, whereby you teach grammar under the guise of communication. So many, many ways of doing this, but you would, you might, you might start a class off with, uh, with speaking, for example, given that opportunity to warm up and, and speak German. And then you can do things like, uh, write something that they say on the board. So if they, if they say something in German, and it's a good sentence, you understand, but it's got some mistakes, then the kind of thing you can do is to write that sentence up on the board or type it into Skype or however it is that you teach and send that sentence back to them and say, I, I would say, look, this is what you just said. And you would write that sentence down, including the mistakes, and say to them, how could you improve this sentence? Try not to say what's wrong with it. Ask them instead, like, how would you improve this sentence? And they may or may not answer. And depending on how they answer, uh, what you can then do is improve that sentence, show them a more accurate version, and say, now, what's the difference between my version and your version? Lead them towards the answer that it's, it's grammar that's different. And then based on that, you could maybe write out some more sentences. Once you've got them interested... Write out some more stuff and say, okay, well, what's, how could you improve this sentence? Often one of the things that I would do in class is to have a pen and paper with me and I'd always be writing down um, sentences that were not correct or could be improved. And then at the end of the lesson, I might spend 10, 15 minutes going through those sentences and asking the students in every case, how could we improve this? And it, depending on, you know, you can get very ninja with this. So What's really good to do is to write down the same kind of mistakes as they crop up. So if you have got, if, if your students are making mistakes with the accusative and dative, for example, then if you can write down five sentences that they say in which they make a mistake with the accusative and the dative, and then you write that those sentences on the board, and you ask them to tell you how to improve it, and then you write down the correct version, and then you ask the students to identify what's what what the difference is. If you're in a classroom, you can give them a pen and ask them to come up and underline those bits which are different. And then every step of the way, you're just showing them, you're getting them to articulate what the difference is, raising their own awareness. It's like a discovery method. You're facilitating their discovery. Then 
there comes a point which um, a friend of mine, Tita, told me about the other day, which I hadn't heard of. It's called the discovery threshold. And if, when you reach the discovery threshold, it's a point where you are so aware now of the issue with a particular grammar point that you can't go back to making mistakes. You can't go back to uh, to not thinking about it because you know about it now. So keep raising their awareness of of grammar mistakes within the context of their own language. It's a very different approach to giving them a, a worksheet full of abstract grammar exercises, showing them verb tables and things like that. Students are much more receptive to this if it's if you're if you are taking their own language, the things that they say, and then showing them how to improve it. So that is what you can kind of call stealth grammar. So you're teaching them grammar without it feeling like it's grammar. If you if you if you kind of cloak it in the in, in the sense of improving what they've said, they don't necessarily realise that you're teaching them grammar. You can record your student speaking. You can get if you're in if you're face to face, you can just use your iPhone and record them speaking. Uh, you can use a Skype call recorder or something like that to record them speaking, and then have them listen back. As you're listening back, you can pause the tape and you can say, okay, what did you just say? How can we improve that? What grammar did you use there? Ask them to reflect on what they're, on what they're saying. Because again, what this does is it, in, it improves uh, monitoring, self-monitoring. It improves the student's ability to understand the own errors that they're making and, and understand different possibilities, new possibilities for improving their language every step of the way we're encouraging the student to discover this rather than imposing it on them um, yourself and if you do this on a regular basis you know it might just be for maybe five minutes in each class or 10 minutes in, in each class but if you do this over every lesson they very quickly start to discover what's going on and they will you know if they're a diligent student will start to fix it if they then come back to you and say look i'm totally confused teacher then that's the point where you maybe you can kind of give them that grammar worksheet and say, okay, go through this, let's learn the basics. And hopefully by that point, they'll actually want to do that. The other thing that's quite nice to do is to is to actually remove speaking from the lesson and actually set writing tasks instead. When you're speaking, it's very easy to ignore grammar because you're just focusing on getting the message across. But when you write, there's nowhere to hide. You really have to think about the grammar that you're using because it's much more obvious to you, um, you know, the, the words on the page. So one thing you can do is to start to set writing homework after every lesson, which you then go through at the start of the next lesson. And again, that's yet another opportunity to teach grammar in a kind of stealth way by showing them opportunities to improve what they are coming up with. All right, so I hope that helps, Ferdinand. I hope that gives you some ideas for what to do. You really need to think about how to work with the student rather than kind of imposing... Um, your, your what you want to do with them because you'll get better results that way I think if you would like to ask me a question especially if you're a teacher then please do you can go to iwillteachyourlanguage.com forward slash ask to do that likewise if you've been enjoying the podcast and you've been learning something or getting some value from it or even if you haven't even if you hate the podcast and you want to tell me how much <laughs> how much you wish I'd shut up then you can really help support me by going and leaving a review on iTunes it really helps other people discover the podcast too it makes it very visible go to iTunes search for I will teach you a language and you can leave a review and rating there now at the end of every episode I like to leave you with a resource of some kind on the topic of the show the blog post I want to send you to today is one that's been very popular actually many many people have shared this around the internet in fact it's got 656 shares in total which is not bad and um, it's a blog post entitled 19 quick changes you can make today that will make you a better language teacher so if you're a language teacher or if you're curious about how your teacher teaches you maybe you want to give them some ideas then go and check out this post it will give you lots of things to think about you can find that in the show notes, which will be at iwillteachyourlanguage.com forward slash episode 184. We've got something great coming up for you in episode 200. It's not far away. But until then, thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you in the next episode of the podcast. Take care.